Veronica Frosto was able to save her home with a little creativity and some help from her lender. If you're struggling with an unaffordable mortgage payment, there is hope. Joining me now are Noemi Guzman of Fair Housing Law Project and J.R. Wheelwright of Neighborhood Housing Services of Silicon Valley. Thanks for being here with us. It's a heartbreaking situa situation. Tell me, first of all, wh what do your organizations do to help people in this spot? Well, <clears throat> the Fair Housing Law Project helps people who have gotten into a predatory loan um, to try and see if we can do um, possibly a civil case against um, the lender, the broker, um, the real estate agent, um, if they have violated certain laws that um, are part of a contract in California. Define for us what is a predatory loan. Well, there's not a specific um, definition for a predatory loan, but what we're seeing is um, high fees. Um, they've been steered into possibly a product that shouldn't have been for them, that should have been maybe, they should have maybe qualified for a prime instead of a subprime loan. Mm -hmm. um, there's kickbacks on uh, for the broker who brokered the loan um, from the lender. Um, there's a number of other things. Uh, a lot of it is negotiating also in a specific language and not getting the right documentation in that same mm -hmm. language that it was negotiated mm -hmm. in. So you take the legal path, and your path is more the counseling, intervention. Tell me how that works. Uh, we have a lot of people who are it, thinking that they're going to lose their home. Either they are in the process of going through foreclosure or they know that their interest rates are going to adjust and that they can't afford to make the payments and we work uh, closely with them to be able to help them to look to at what are the options that they can do. Look at creating a budget, look at looking at what their incomes are. Can they literally afford to keep the home? If they can't afford the home, then we help them to decide what is the best path for them to take. And that path may be th lead to some things like a modification of the loan, or it may lead to something like, you know, a, a a claim against PMI, PMI property mm -hmm. mortgage insurance. Uh, we can negotiate a forbearance uh, where we're able to, to do mm -hmm. different things that way. But, go but ahead. you did say there were some key ways to try and get out of trouble. For example, having a budget, really knowing your finances. That sounds simple, but surprisingly, a lot of people don't. Yeah, they don't. Um, they, if they can review their finances so that they know what, what it is that they can, that they have available mm -hmm. to be able to put towards making a payment. They need to determine all their sources of income. Is this situation that they're in temporary or is it permanent? You know, if it's just a, a temporary situation, then we can look at that, that leads to what we can do in some workouts. They need to know all their debt. Mm -hmm. Some folks don't consider what they actually owe. Yes, yeah. and even though it's hard for, for some people, they really want to stay in their home and that's what we want to help them to do. But it may be that the best thing for them to do in their situation with the given circumstances that they have is to sell the home. You advise to sell your home before you're foreclosed on? Definitely. Because foreclosure's there forever? Well, foreclosure's going to show up on their credit report for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they could have a triple whammy. They could have a foreclosure. They could have uh, a, a, a uh, what's Bank that? bankruptcy. Yeah, bankruptcy mm -hmm. And they, you know, they could try bankruptcy to, to stay in the home a little bit longer. And the other thing then would be that then if they choose not to move out when they should move out, then they could have an eviction and you could have all three of them on their credit report. Awful. But if you're trying to sell because you want to avoid foreclosure and you can't sell, we have all, so many communities with There's hundreds of homes. There's an awful lot, of, of, a lot of inventory right now on the, on the market. Um, and that's where you know the realtors are trying to help. Um, there is a short sale where you can sell the home you know, ahead of time, you know, ahead of, ahead of foreclosure where the banks can actually take less um, in order so mm -hmm. that they don't have to put it into their inventory. The banks don't want all these homes. No, they do not. They've gotten a little more flexible now <laughs> about renegotiating. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Because in the beginning, th it was sort of like, sorry, tough luck. Well, I think the banks had to gear up for this. They had no knowledge. I mean, yes, they could see things, but they're always looking at statistics. They did not have the staff available to be able to do the loss mitigation, mm -hmm. to be able to work with people. Uh, you know, just like, just like going through the loan process, there's a lot of paperwork that has to be dealt with. And so they had to gear up for that. Uh, in the process of gearing up for that, that's brought in new opportunities for people to, to be able to try to do a workout. Mm -hmm. So how do you avoid a predatory loan? What would be the red flags that you just run from? 
Um, a lot of the red flags is um, aggressive solicitation, solicitation by phone, knocking on people's doors, um, because if we believe that if the, there is a good product out there, that product shouldn't be coming to you. You should be able to go to that product. There's such a thing as it's too good to be true. <laughs> um, so a lot of the things that we try to tell people to avoid is really if you are interested in buying a property or refinancing, really research who you're going to deal with. Um, because you want to know their background, you want to know their recommendations. Um, so I would say a lot of research is definitely needed before you buy a house. Um, but a lot of the flags that we're also seeing is <clears throat> that a lot of these people um, are going to someone that was recommended by a family member. And I think that that's where it gets a little bit difficult, is drawing the line on who you're going to go to. And if the bank won't work with you, or you're not having success, what you want people to know is that there are resources out there that can help them wade through the red tape or the resistance. What, they, what people need to realize is there are a lot of organizations that are out there to assist people. Um, one of the organizations that's a national organization is the Hope Line, and they can call 888-995-HOPE. And there's people 24-7 that can answer the phone, answer the questions, help them to go through and establish a budget, put together some things that are there. Then if they need assistance locally, then they can work with, with a local counseling agency that's, that's there. And the Hope Line can recommend them to somebody that's local to them. They certainly need hope. In your offices, do you, do you see it ebb at all, or are you just as busy as ever? I mean, where do we know when we've seen the worst of it? Well, uh, for, for our office right now, we are currently, um, we have a waiting list, mm. which we didn't have before. There was a, a time where we actually had stopped taking in cases, and because of the influx of so many people coming in with the same problem over and over and over. So right now we do have a waiting list. We do have very limited resources. We are a nonprofit, so it's very hard for us to be able to help every single person that calls and has the same situation. Are you able to win these civil cases when you, is it a tough thing to prove? Um, it is and it isn't. Um, some are very clear cut, some of them are a little bit more difficult, but I can honestly say we have a very good uh, turnout rate. Mm -hmm. So um, since I've been there since 05, you know, we haven't lost a case yet. And how about the volume of what you're seeing? The volume is still increasing. Um, we're still trying to help as many people as we can, um, but we do have limited resources, and, and uh, w but uh, when we can help people, we have success stories, and that's what we like to tell. It's one thing to lose a, a property that you bought as an investment, perhaps. It's, w it's another thing to lose a family home. I think that the, you know, really strikes for all of us. Um, I, I can't imagine the stories. Well, it, people need to realize it is a home, yes, we understand that, but this may not be the, the last home that they're ever going to own. Mm -hmm. If they got in over their head, they have the opportunity to exit from that, that home, rebuild their credit, re-get back into programs. There are many first-time homebuyer programs that they'll qualify for again and that they'll be able to then go on, a, on the, right, the right way to step into home ownership. And that's the key thing is handling it the right way and asking for help early. Don't yeah. wait. Yes. All right. Thank you both, Noemi and JR, for all of your expertise today.